Hi, and thanks so much for joining me here today. I wrote something that I was feeling, <laughs> I was just looking around at the world and thinking how different it is today, how different the United States is. And then I realized too that this is for the Friday on Memorial Day weekend. And I would think about those veterans that lost their life in supporting the values of the United States and the Constitution and what this country was founded on. And how many would think if they came back today, what had happened to the United States the way they knew it. Because when many of them knew it, there were 10 commandments that hung in the schools and not that everybody had to be a Christian, but those were very good basic rules in life for the benefit of all their citizens. And as I looked around and thought about the different things and looked at some studies, even of just the lack of faith in God, the lack of belief in the Bible, even among Christians, just not believing that Jesus was sinless and that the Bible's true or a book worth following. It's just pretty stunning. So it caused me to think about that and then I wrote and this. It's called The Enormous Cost to the World of Not Believing the Bible as God's Word. I'm going to be reading it because I don't want to miss anything about it. Now, by believing, I mean not just the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition, like verb, to consider to be true or honest, to accept the word or evidence of, or the intransitive verb, to accept something as true, genuine, or real. And what we mostly understood is to believe is to have a firm or wholehearted religious conviction or persuasion to regard the evidence of God as fact. No, when I say believe or believing, I mean you believe. And you trust it to the absolute point that your life is built upon it completely. It is the foundation of your life. The statues and promises of the Bible are what you stake your life on. Even more so, you strive to live them out. They are your God rules, your guide rails in life. You are a person who understands from the events recorded in the Bible that God is who he says he is, and we humans are who his word describes us as created, loved, but fallen. Humanity in need of redemption and restoration back to God to fulfill what is beautiful. A life built on, in, and with true love, which can only come from a holy God who is both just and merciful. In contrast, here is the world that refuses to accept and honor the Bible as God's word. Sin of every kind in thought, word, and deed. Ungodly governance at all levels of government and rule motivated and run by the principles that anyone in opposition needs to be dominated diminished or destroyed. The breakdown of families into groups of people morph together because their own biological families are broken, just like Humpty Dumpty in the children's poem, where Humpty the egg fell off a wall he was sitting on, broke, and all those who were supposed to be able to put him back together couldn't. Without God's word and without believing it as a nation or a world, we have the ending of lives, unborn, old, or any age in between, seen as not useful, a burden, too inconvenient, too sick, or too something or another. 
This is judged by any other individual, group, or entire nations. Without the belief in the Bible as God's word, we have the elevating of one or more groups of people at the expense of others. We have the, I need it more than you, so I'll take it, because why shouldn't I philosophy. We have the never-ending or navel-gazing spiritual practices of multitudes or the death of religions and spiritual practices to make way for gods of humanism, secularism, atheism, or other isms. Without believing the Bible as God's word, we have government controls like communism and its cousin socialism, the crazy philosophy and political aspiration to provide for everyone in a reasonable and fair manner. How many failed attempts in history, distant and recent, do people need to see before understanding this deeply flawed concept? Evil people always rise to make the power grab or, quote, manage the money and the people, or useless idiots, a term first coined by Vladimir Lenin, but now used by various parties, factions, and other groups in the world. A world that does not believe in God's word, the Bible, also has, in the midst of this sacrosanct, woke society, that does all it can to appear that it is against slavery both in history or its remnants today, that there is a turning away of the heads and hearts from the plights of those victimized by sex trafficking slavery, an evil birthed generations ago, but that still goes on today, crisscrossing the globe in ever enlarging arcs. This turning of the heads away is acting duplicitous. We have excuses for evil, lies to cover the evil, and even more excuses, lies, and reasoning until the world is one vast global petri dish filled with organisms of destruction and death. This is our world today. You may think I go too far, because you see some goodness in humanity, and yes, there is much, but then you have the ever-pervasive, I do good because it makes me feel good about myself, and you don't do it solely because it's the right thing to do. That's selfish goodness. God does good because he is holy and can do no other. We humans, on the other hand, think ourselves good in general while thinking evil of others or gossiping or planning the demise of someone or something. Oh, I could go on and on. But if you're honest, you can see the greed, the evil, the sickness that has overtaken our planet. So many are so broken and still they dismiss the very book and the one who can help. Blind, deaf, and hard of heart, they plunge headlong off the cliff of eternity. And what hope do you have then? Thank you to all of you who have joined me. I hope you have a happy Memorial Day weekend. And thank you to all those of you who have lost loved ones in fighting for our country and its freedoms.